The Chernobyl nuclear disaster, a catastrophic event that unfolded on April 26, 1986, has left an indelible mark on history. The explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant released a massive amount of radioactive material into the atmosphere, creating a crisis that the Soviet Union could not conceal from the world. The immediate aftermath was marked by chaos, fear, and heroism, as workers and engineers scrambled to prevent further catastrophe. Decades later, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone has transformed into an unexpected sanctuary for wildlife, revealing nature's resilience and adaptability in the face of adversity. But before we start our story, smash the like button, make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you won't miss any new stories. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, spanning over 1,600 square miles, has become one of Europe's largest wildlife sanctuaries. In the absence of human interference and threats like hunting, the wildlife in this area is flourishing. This transformation highlights the resilience of nature and the complex ways in which wildlife adapts to environments altered by human activity. Terrestrial animals are not the only ones thriving. A recent study revealed that semi-aquatic animals are also doing well. Scientists placed dead fish along riverbanks and set up cameras to observe which animals would be attracted. Within a week, 98% of the fish carcasses were consumed. Otters, minks, and white-tailed eagles were photographed feeding along the river's edge, marking the first observation of these creatures in the region since the 1986 disaster. This highlights their need to scavenge and adapt to their environment. In a scenario reminiscent of a post-apocalyptic film, giant catfish are thriving in radioactive ponds. These catfish, with their large appetites and lack of natural predators in the Chernobyl area, have seen their population grow in these radioactive waters. However, unlike fictional tales, these catfish do not possess superpowers. The Eurasian lynx, absent for nearly 50 years, has made a surprising return to the area. Previously thought to be gone for good, researchers have now observed tracks and tree scratches indicative of their presence. Attracted by the dense fox and rabbit populations, there are now three different lynx families in the zone. Foxes, both red and white, are among the most common mammals in the nuclear zone. Despite high radioactivity, these resourceful creatures are frequently spotted by scientists. Interestingly, they exhibit a unique behavior of approaching humans within the exclusion zone, possibly due to the reduced human threat showcasing wildlife's adaptability to unusual circumstances. In an attempt to save the endangered Przewalski's horses, they were introduced to the nuclear site in the 1990s as part of a conservation experiment. While horses brought from zoos did not survive, wild horses that relocated to the area thrived. The absence of human interference has allowed the horse population to breed successfully across multiple generations. The bison population in the Chernobyl exclusion area has expanded by 10% since 1996. The lack of human hunting is a primary factor in their population growth. Camera traps have provided insights into the region's flourishing animal populations. However, the impact of radiation on bison remains uncertain, given their lifespan of 24 years. Brown bears, absent from the Chernobyl area for nearly a century, have also returned. In 2014, scientists captured photographic evidence of their presence. The absence of humans has allowed yet another animal population to thrive. Prey in this contaminated region has made it an ideal habitat for wolves. Overall, the Chernobyl exclusion zone has become an unintended sanctuary where various animal populations are flourishing in the absence of human interference. This transformation highlights the resilience of wildlife and the complex ways in which they adapt to and thrive in environments altered by human activity. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, despite its history of nuclear disaster, has become a unique ecological haven where wildlife has adapted in surprising ways. Researchers have discovered that mutant wolves in this area possess genes resistant to cancer offering potential insights into human cancer treatments. These wolves have developed a unique immunity to radiation, similar to cancer patients undergoing radiation therapy, 
which could lead to advances in enhancing cancer survival rates in humans. In the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, beavers have emerged as unexpected engineers of the ecosystem. Thriving in the absence of human disruption, they have constructed numerous dams along contaminated waterways, creating wetlands that inadvertently mitigate radioactive runoff. Stray dogs, descendants of pets left behind after the Chernobyl disaster, have learned to fend for themselves. An estimated 900 stray dogs live in the exclusion zone, forming packs and continuing to breed. Volunteers, including veterinarians and radiation experts, participate in an initiative called the Dogs of Chernobyl, capturing dogs to study their radiation exposure, vaccinating them, and tagging them for monitoring. Some dogs are outfitted with collars equipped with radiation sensors and GPS receivers to map radiation levels. Despite the harsh conditions, these dogs have become native to the area. Despite the challenges, there is hope for the stray dogs of Chernobyl. A rescue program exists to help them, led by the U.S. nonprofit organization Clean Futures Fund. They have established a local veterinary clinic providing vaccinations and spay or neuter services to control the population. However, survival remains difficult, with natural predators like wolves and bears posing threats, especially during harsh Ukrainian winters. Amid the chaos of the Chernobyl disaster, biological diversity has surprisingly thrived. The radiation from the accident was 4,000 times that of the Hiroshima bombing, yet animal, insect, and plant populations continue to flourish. The Tree Project, in collaboration with the UK's Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, has documented abundant fauna in highly radioactive areas. Although some insects exposed to high radiation levels have shorter lifespans, they reproduce quickly enough to maintain population numbers. The survival of animal populations in Chernobyl, despite the threat of radiation poisoning, is puzzling. While the area is deemed unsafe for human habitation for the next 20,000 years, wildlife populations are growing, primarily due to the absence of human predators. Birds in the Chernobyl area provide clear evidence of radiation damage as they suffer from smaller brains compared to those outside the exclusion zone. A study on 550 birds showed that Chernobyl birds have reduced brain sizes, particularly among younger birds. This results in decreased cognitive capacity, making it unlikely for these mutations to persist in future generations. For humans, Radiation from Chernobyl poses a cancer risk by damaging DNA. The explosion released radioactive isotopes like iodine-131 and cesium-137, which can cause DNA mutations that lead to cancer. The World Health Organization estimates an additional 4,000 cancer deaths due to the disaster. In animals, germline mutations are decreasing in areas with lower radiation levels. The decline in arachnid and invertebrate populations in Chernobyl is concerning. Radiation in the soil affects their eggs, leading to high mortality rates or severe genetic abnormalities in young insects. Spiders, butterflies, dragonflies, and grasshoppers have all seen reduced populations in the exclusion zone. While it's clear that radiation is the cause, further studies are needed to understand its full impact on these native insect populations. Understanding evolution in a radiation-polluted ecosystem remains a challenge. Following the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, certain animals have demonstrated surprising resilience, prompting scientists to hypothesize that these organisms have developed evolutionary adaptations to their radioactive environment. For example, frogs in highly radiated areas have turned a darker green compared to those in less affected zones although it's unclear if this adaptation enhances their survival. Similarly, the French National Center for Scientific Research found that some bird species in Chernobyl produce higher antioxidant levels, which may protect them from genetic damage typically caused by radiation. The Chernobyl region is highly susceptible to wildfires due to the absence of forest management and the accumulation of debris. Wildfires can rapidly spread radiation as burning plants release radioactive particles into the air, potentially carrying them over long distances. A past wildfire in Chernobyl dispersed radioactive substances thousands of miles away, 
and scientists warn that a large enough fire could even affect the United Kingdom. Chernobyl's ecosystem, devoid of human habitation and rich in radiation, offers a unique opportunity for studying evolutionary adaptations. The absence of humans has allowed wildlife to flourish despite the adverse effects of radiation. The Chernobyl exclusion zone raises an intriguing question. Does the absence of human interference outweigh the detrimental effects of radiation on plants and animals? Despite the initial harm, wildlife has adapted and thrived in this human-free environment, suggesting that human encroachment may pose a greater threat than radiation. Some scientists theorize that animals have migrated to Chernobyl to escape human activity, benefiting from the lack of hunting and urbanization. The Chernobyl disaster, initially concealed by the Soviet Union, gradually came to light after its collapse, revealing the magnitude of the tragedy and the heroism of those who acted to mitigate its impact. In 2018, Alexei Anonenko and Valery Bespalov, two plant workers, were honored with the Ukrainian Order for Courage for their bravery in preventing a larger catastrophe. Their actions, along with others, were depicted in HBO's series Chernobyl, highlighting the sacrifices made to contain the disaster. The disaster was catastrophic, releasing hazardous radioactive material into the atmosphere. The plant's basement contained millions of gallons of radioactive water waste, and if the fire reached it, the resulting explosion could have been catastrophic, spreading radioactive waste across Europe and potentially destroying Northern Europe. Some estimates predicted it would render Northern Ukraine uninhabitable for centuries. Early mistakes were made in response to the crisis, such as flooding the reactor floor, which brought radioactive water and flames dangerously close. This increased the risk of an explosion if the fire reached the basement. Additionally, the flooding blocked vital cooling valves, essential for preventing a meltdown. To prevent disaster, engineers Alexei Anonenko, Valery Bezpalov, and Baranov volunteered to manually adjust the valves despite the life-threatening risks. Wearing diving wetsuits instead of lead-lined gear, they waded through knee-high radioactive water to locate the valves. Their actions successfully drained the bubbler pools, reducing the immediate danger. However, the reactor continued to burn, posing a risk of reaching the groundwater. The Soviets sent liquid nitrogen to freeze the ground beneath the plant to prevent the fire from reaching the water table. Miners were also dispatched to dig trenches with minimal protective gear, exposing them to radiation. The engineers' bravery prevented a greater disaster, though the threat remained high. Chernobyl showcased the severe consequences of nuclear accidents and the heroism of those who risked their lives to prevent further destruction. The workers at Chernobyl feared the worst, knowing that if the fires reached the water supply, the catastrophe could have been even more devastating. When the engineers succeeded in their mission, the danger was significantly reduced, and there was great relief among the workers. While the engineers survived, the aftermath of the disaster was grim. Many people and animals suffered severe radiation exposure, leading to countless long-term illnesses. Some workers were vaporized in the explosion, and many others suffered painful consequences from radiation exposure. Despite their success, Chernobyl was a disaster with inevitable casualties. The tragic story of Alexander Akimov and Leonid Toptonov highlights the dangers faced by those who tried to contain the crisis. They waded into the radioactive water, attempting to pump coolant into the reactor, but both men died from radiation exposure a few days later. Their efforts were in vain, and their deaths served as a stark reminder of the dangers posed by the explosion. Chernobyl has been mythologized, with some romanticizing the disaster and others politicizing it. At the time, wading through the toxic water seemed like a death sentence, and the engineer's successful mission seemed almost impossible. Contrary to popular belief, the engineers who performed the heroic mission survived, partly due to the actions of firefighters who drained water from the basement and the engineer's knowledge of the valve locations, which minimized their exposure. While Baranov died in 2005, Anonenko and Bezpalov are still alive today, living relatively normal lives. Their story of heroism continues to inspire, but the full scope of the disaster remains under examination.
Andrew Leatherbarrow's book, Chernobyl 012340, offers an updated account of the disaster, drawing from various reports, including those of engineers and scientists. However, more details remain uncovered, such as the scapegoating of an engineer involved in the disaster. The bravery of the engineers who manually adjusted the valves allowed the scientists to understand the problem and prevent a greater catastrophe. Chernobyl's story is one of tragedy and heroism, with new revelations still emerging.